PC gaming on a laptop is just the only option for some gamers. Whether they're traveling back and forth to college, or maybe they have a job where they're just out of town a lot, gaming on a laptop is the best option for them. But some of the biggest problems that come with a gaming laptop can be solved by our video sponsor, Lano and their V12 cooler. And what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna see if a laptop cooler can actually give our laptop more FPS in game. So we're gonna run it through a series of benchmarks as well go over the unique features that Lano's doing with this laptop cooler that no one else is doing. Now Lano did sponsor this video, but I want you to be aware that I was able to test this for two weeks and I was able to give you know some honest feedback. However, I will encourage you after you watch this video on the laptop cooler, go find another video. Maybe one that's not sponsored, you know, see what they say about the laptop cooler. But before we hop into the benchmarks, let's go over the specs of the cooler because it does some pretty cool things. First of all, the laptop cooler comes with a power cord and a USB to USB-C, which the USB-C goes into the cooler. And what it kind of does is it allows us to have access to a couple more USB ports here on the side. And these USB ports allow us to plug up a keyboard, a mouse, or other things that are accessories to your laptop that you might want to put in a docking kind of situation. This is great for someone that might have a gaming setup at college, as well as a gaming setup at their parents' house that they rotate back and forth so they don't have to carry their keyboard and mouse and things like that. It would be a great kind of docking situation. Another big problem with laptops is dust, and they do have this removable dust filter so you can remove it, clean it, that sort of thing, because laptops just they, they they love the dust. They, they, they just love it. And so over a period of time, your laptop is going to collect dust. This has a very nice dust filter. There's not dust getting in here. I've, I've used this for several hours now, and it looks like it's brand new on the inside. Like you can't even see any dust in there. And I just accidentally unplugged it. So that's why the light went off. And you can't see any dust on the inside here from all. And like, I know I've only had it for a week or two, but with it pulling air in to cool the laptop, you would think that dust might get in here but with all the filters that it has um, even on the inside with the fan like I mean you're gonna you, uh, there's no dust all right now my laptop is dusty because I haven't cleaned it and it's it's getting up there in age. But we didn't have any dust that was a result of this circulating air to cool off the laptop. As far as the laptop specs go, I've had this laptop for a while. I bought it brand new. It has a 10th gen i7 10750H with an RTX 2070 laptop GPU. So it's nothing super fancy, but it can play some games and I enjoy carrying it on vacation while my wife's shopping, playing games on it, editing videos. But again, one of the biggest problems I have is it does have some cool problems. It's, it's hard to keep it cool. So sometimes when it thermal throttles or it gets to that spot, you do lose some FPS. So we're going to see if this cooler can actually help us with that. So one of the biggest benefits for that is if you have your laptop laying flat on a table, even though it's on a table, there's not a lot of room for air to get up under the laptop. And so there are vents on the back and there's nowhere for those vents to get air if it's laying flat on the table. Even though there's like a beveled edge right here on my laptop, that's still a very small space that air's gotta try to get up under there and cool any of the components. Cause all your heat sinks and stuff like that are here underneath the back cover for this laptop. And so it is very hard to keep it cool, which I mean, you can buy those little metal stands and I, and I have one where you can kind of set it on top of it and it gets it, you know, a few inches off the ground and you can get some air up under it that way, but it's still not as good as actually having fans to circulate air. So this definitely solves that. One thing I really like about it is it, they did add this little stand here where it catches the laptop. So you can kind of lock the laptop into place. So even though this foam is pretty nice and gonna keep it from, you know, falling, these also will keep it from falling off. Like it's not gonna go forward and you don't have to worry about it moving and jiggling around, which is a really nice touch. So, cause if you're using the actual keyboard, if you don't have your own keyboard and you're using to game the WSAD keys, like you're not gonna want it to be jerking around and be unstable. And this thing is very sturdy. So I really, really like that. Another nice feature are the legs on it. The legs actually have, like you can lay it flat if you'd like, which some people, you know, might like it to lay flat, but the legs also have two different settings. You can fold it all the way out so that it's like this, or you can fold it in so it's a little bit shorter. So there's three heights to the stand, so you can find the perfect situation for you as far as how you like your gaming sessions to be. I liked the middle one the best in my testing, so I liked it to be up like this. I didn't fold it all the way out and get it to where, as you can see, the difference between these two. Like this one's all the way out, this one's a little shorter. I like the 
one that was in the middle. Not all the way up, not all the way down. That was just my favorite for my testing. And the last couple things I wanna talk about with the cooler before we hop into the FPS test are it does have a changeable RGB settings. So there's a few different RGB modes. I think there's four different RGB modes. And then there's some different colors here that you can cycle through if you wanna do the solid. I like the color orange, so that's where I like to leave it in this orangish reddish area. And then there is a mode for just a solid color if you'd like, but you also have some different like RGB type effects that you can do on this thing. The next thing is you can set how fast you want the blower to go. It starts at 300, that's the lowest setting, and it goes all the way up to 2800. So I'm gonna show you a sound test here in a second of how loud it sounds on each of those settings. 2800 being the highest is pretty loud, but in my opinion, if you're wearing a gaming headset and you have somewhere like Discord that's gonna like filter the background noise on your microphone, I didn't mind it being cranked all the way up. In my little office here, like I shut my door and went and stood outside. You couldn't, like if my wife's watching TV, like she couldn't really hear the fan that much. So now if you're, you share a room with somebody, like a roommate in college, you probably don't wanna crank the fan all the way up. So the sweet spot that's recommended is between 800 and 1000 and you can see that here on the sound test that we're about to do that that is a fairly quiet level that you can have your sound at but if you're in a room by yourself I would crank it all the way up as you'll see in the video works pretty well when it comes to your temperatures and your FPS tests. All right, now that you've heard the sound, let's see how well it actually affects our temperatures and our FPS. So we ran three tests, and we ran each test two different ways. So we ran a benchmark in Furmark. We let the laptop run for 10 minutes on Furmark, once with it flat on the table, and once with it on the laptop cooler. And we repeated that same process playing Black Myth Wukong and Fortnite. And I was kind of shocked with the results, to be honest with you. Laying flat on the table, our CPU temperature in all three benchmarks was pretty hot. Like we were right at 99 to 100 degrees Celsius on our CPU temperature in all the benchmarks. Even though Furmark and Black Myth Wukong didn't use a ton of the CPU while we were playing, it still stayed pretty maxed out at around that 99 degrees in the high 90s when it comes to CPU temperature. Now part of that could be from the fact that, you know, it's probably pretty dusty on the inside because I have not cleaned it in a while. And so that is one factor, but 99 degrees is pretty warm, even for a laptop. Now, laptop stuff is obviously made so that it can run a little bit hotter because you're not getting a lot of airflow, but still that was extremely warm. Same thing with Fortnite. Fortnite, we played it on performance mode so it would use more of the CPU, and it also ran very hot, and our FPS was just not super stable with a lot of drops here and there. And the drops, you know, weren't super massive. Like, we didn't go down to like single digit FPS numbers, but we did fluctuate a lot between like 150 FPS to 120. Black Myth Wukong stayed around that 60-ish FPS mark in most of the benchmarks that we've done. And when we fought in the boss battle, Black Myth Wukong, our FPS numbers were, you know, in the 50s at times when we were fighting the boss. And then Furmark, it has an FPS number, an FPS counter during the Fur Furmark benchmarks. And it was you know, around like 73, 74 FPS. Our GPU temperatures are where we saw the biggest gain. The GPU temperatures with the laptop laying flat on the table were anywhere from like 65, high 60s, to even high 70s at times. Now, Furmark obviously pushed that to the limits, as you can see here on the screen, and it got it pretty, pretty warm especially running it for 10 minutes. So then we repeated all three of those tests on the laptop cooler. Now we ran the laptop cooler at the max settings, so we bumped it up as high as we could. You heard how loud that was a while ago on the sound test, but we wanted to see what our maximum performance gains were when we actually tested this on the laptop cooler. In Furmark, we saw about a 10 FPS gain, so it was like in the low 70s. On the FPS markers when we were running it without the laptop cooler flat on the table, and we saw as much as at 80 FPS even at times when we ran the benchmark maxed out on the cooler. Now our CPU temperatures dropped the most in Furmark 
again, the CPU is not working very hard in Furmark, like the usage is pretty low. So we did see a drastic decrease in temperature going from the 90s to staying around that 70 and 80 range most of the time during the Furmark benchmarks. But we saw a massive decrease in GPU temperature by as many as 20 degrees at various times throughout the benchmark. So those are really nice performance gains. But the performance gains didn't stop there. When we ran the performance tests with Black Myth Wukong and Fortnite, we also saw some improvements in FPS, which honestly I was shocked by because I really didn't think it would give me more FPS, but it actually did. In Black Myth Wukong, we were able to hold that 60 FPS during boss fights and even had FPS as high as in the 70s. And so for Black Myth Wukong, if you watch my other video that I just got done doing where I tested a bunch of graphics cards, getting 60 FPS without frame generation in Black Myth Wukong is not an easy feat. So the fact that we were able to keep temperatures down and do that a, a really nice level at 1080p was pretty cool to see. So about 10 FPS was our difference in both Furmark and in Black Myth Wukong. Now the FPS gains were harder to see in Fortnite, but that's because Fortnite in general, it's a CPU based game for one. So like even though the graphics card does matter, the CPU is stressed more than the graphics card, especially when we're running in performance mode. But what we did notice in Fortnite is our max FPS number, so the number that was being hit the highest in the FPS was much higher than what we got when the laptop was laying flat on the table. We peaked at around like 160 to 170 without the laptop cooler. And with the laptop cooler, there were parts of the map where we were getting close to 200 FPS and the lowest it would drop at times was around the 150-ish mark, other than the occasional like massive drop that Fortnite has. But our drops were a lot less frequent and it stayed a lot more consistent in our FPS numbers, running it with the cooler versus not running it with the cooler. So overall, I can definitely say that from now on when I go on vacation, this will definitely be what I carry to set my laptop on while I'm editing, or playing games while I'm on vacation because I really, really like this design. If you think you might wanna pick up a laptop cooler from Lano, this is the V12. I really like it. There's a link in the description. And if you're still wanting to see some stuff about PCs, go watch this video.